Hi, my name is Robbie Tong, and this is my electronics project portfolio. So this is one of the first projects that I, I made in school. Um, for CPE-233, we implemented a risk processor on an FPGA. Here you can see the coordinates of the ball going on the LED display. We use the Nexus 2 Digilent, um, Digilent Board Devel Development Kit. So all this you, that you're seeing is was written in assembly um, using instructions that we implemented in hardware and VHDL on our soft processor using VHDL. The object of the game is to trap the ball, and that was my final project for this class. Here you can, this is my Xilinx setup. I quickly switch over because that apparently the VHDL is not interesting. The software is more important at this point. I think the software was more important at this point because I had worked so long on it. I used all the registers and no no RAM. I was kind of in a rush and I didn't want to switch up my workflow. Here's the endless label statements. It's also worth noting that I designed the PS2 keyboard driver because the original keyboard driver that our teacher was using was not sensitive enough. I came up with a simple design. It's a shift register. That's all it is, a shift register. And the PS2 clock protocol, all it does is it clocks on falling edges when it has data. So when it has data, it starts clocking, clocking one of its pins. So on each clock, I have the shift register take in data and once it stops, it, you have a keyboard code. So my driver raises an interrupt flag, and the processor processor jumps to .org 3FF and does its interrupt routine. All right, so this is my analog bike light, and it uses only op amps in comparator mode to, to turn on the LEDs in a sequence, no digital logic, although I am using the op amps in kind of a digital fashion. Anyways, it uses resistors and capacitors to create the timing interval between each LED turning on. Uh, comparator turns on and starts charging through a resistor, a capacitor. And the voltage at the top of the capacitor goes into the positive input of the next comparator. And as soon as the positive voltage goes above a threshold, this comparator turns on and does the same thing to the next resistor. The, resistor combination, the next one, the next one. And connected to each at the top of the resistor is an LED to kind of indicate which the stages of it. So when it reaches the last comparator, the last comparator turns on and starts charging starts charging this this resistor capacitor. And once this voltage reaches a certain threshold, it turns off, it's inverted, it turns off the first op amp. Okay, and once this op amp turns off, the voltage goes low, and you'll notice that there's a diode in parallel with this with the resistor, and pretty quickly discharges the capacitor up till its forward voltage. So this is one of my most recent projects. Um, the goal was to figure out how to actuate electronically a shutter release cable for a vintage camera. Um, the client wanted this shutter release cable to be triggered with a timer. So the device would count down and then a this would actuate on this shutter release that you see right here. So the goal was to combine this shutter release and a flash housing into one package. I thought this would be a good choice because it can fit on top of the camera. And with a servo, with a microprocessor, perform all these tasks. And so here I use a hinge to attach the servo to the to the top. And here's the build process with the LCD screen. You can see. And here's a video of the prototype. Here I'm about to run a test program to try to actuate the camera. It's just there to see if it can trigger it. Test. Let's give you a test. Press the red button. Down to trigger. 
cool. And what's right. interesting about the red button is that it used to be a part of the original Flash housing. So I thought that was pretty, pretty cool to reuse that button. It's less work for me. So here's an example of setting the timer, you know, the countdown mechanism. So it gives you the upper limit and hex. And it remembers because it stores it in the EEPROM. That's why it was at five. Up, increase, down, decrease. All right. So this is one of my latest, latest tinkering inventions. It's a mini POV, it's a persistent vision toy, it has eight LEDs and it flashes a frame of a particular image you want to display um, frame by frame so that when you move the device back and forth it should just it should draw out the image that you you want it to draw. Um, I originally intended it to be mounted on a bike wheel and have it draw out a little image but the results weren't that good so I'm rethinking my design. Anyways, I designed this board in Eagle CAD, and I fabricated it myself. I used uh, fer fer chloride to etch it. And here's the program that sends the, the image that you want to display to the board. It uses screen programming to send the data byte by byte to it. And it can hold up to 256 columns, and you can increase the columns. I wrote this program in Java. This is a clock and a data line. And the gray is actually a reference for the screen programming because it uses photo transistors and it uses a comparator on the microcontroller. I'm using an ATtiny 84. So you, here you can see it flashing the data. And each time all of them light up, it signals that it got it. There's parity checking and there's a stop bit. When I took this video, um, it didn't really. It only shows the data acquisition part, but that was the most labor-intensive part of this project.